What's going on guys? Adam Luce here. Welcome back to another video. Move away fishing. Today we got my buddy Victor with me again. What up? From Land Shark Outdoors. We filmed that commercial mackerel fishing video and everyone seemed to love it, so we're collabing again. You know how it is. So today we went out and targeted sheep's head and spade fish. And we got them, boys. We got them good. Yeah, we did. And we also had a pretty nasty encounter with an eel. Adam did, actually. We were, uh, we had all these fish tied up. Take a look at that. That is the damage of a moray eel. Imagine that being your hands. Or my foot. <laughs> <laughs> or your foot, which has happened to you in the past, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got smoked, boys. I'll make a whole separate video on that, but. So in this video, I used my 1,000 Rob Allen spear gun, and Victor used this guy right here, pole spear. It's a little bit easier. Adam said he wanted to bring a pole spear too, but it's easier when you're dealing with small fish like that because you could take them in and out of the shaft and, mm -hmm. and your tip really easily. Yeah. So, like Victor said, it's a lot easier to use a pole spear, especially for these fish because they're small fish and they're not too smart. I brought my spear gun just in case we saw a Kubera snapper, which we usually do at the spot we're at, but we didn't today. Actually, I saw one, but he was too small to shoot. Um, and it's just a pain, like loading this thing underwater all the time just to shoot small fish. But we made it happen, we got it done. We also had a pretty scary encounter with a moray eel today, like seven or eight feet. This is the aftermath of it right here. Yeah. They, uh, they're no joke. Those eels, they live in the rocks, which Adam is uh, very familiar with. <laughs> He's gotten bit by an eel in a rock before, and no they, you have no idea they're there. They, an eight foot moray eel could be in like a foot of water in the rocks, just hiding away, and they come out and ambush their prey, which is exactly what they did with the sheep's head. But we shouldn't have kept our fish probably so close to the rocks, so. Yeah, it was We're fault. in their environment. We're intruding on their territory, so that's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. And that's the risk we take when we're out there diving, but. And we're not gonna be doing any talking when we're, when we're diving because the GoPro's underwater, of course. So we kind of just explained what we did in the intro of this video. And we saw a pair of fish, snook. It was a really pretty dive, but the water was definitely chilly for us Floridians. So Very. I had my top on. You had like, you what, you had like a skin suit? Yeah, that didn't do much. Mm -mm. Let's dive right into the video. Hope you guys enjoy this one.
Alrighty guys, just set the camera up and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fillet these fish on the side of my house. So it's my knife and my sharpener. I'm actually not a chief right now, so I have a knife that I can cut fish into. Shout out to Chief. <laughs> really like this knife. Victoria Knox. Not sponsored. I just really like it. Super, super sharp knife. So There's your beautiful, beautiful sheep's head there. Hope that was in focus, probably not. Make this first cut. I know it's gonna hard, be hard for you guys to see, but just bear with me. First cut right there. Holy smokes, the door's closed behind me. Now I'm gonna follow back behind Fins there. Now sheep said have absolutely beautiful meat. I love them. <coughs> They're just a little bit of a pain in the butt to fillet, but if you have a sharp knife, it makes it a lot easier. Trust me. And they don't have very much meat on them for how like big they are. You'd think they would, there's just a lot of bones. Right over the rib cage, you guys can probably hear that from all the way over there. Mm, that's gonna be good. That looks so good. That meat looks so, so, so good. Come on. All right, look at that. Absolutely beautiful, gorgeous white meat. Look at that. Hmm, just want to take a bite of it. So, beautiful filet job. There's that first side. Didn't miss any meat there. Um, I'm gonna filet the other side. You guys don't even see me do that. I'm actually gonna have my mom come out here though and I'll have her uh, film me filet the spade fish since I've never filleted one on camera. See you guys in a minute. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and filet the other side. My mom came out here so I'll filet the other side on the camera for you guys. Fall right down the backbone right here. You want that knife, you want to make that noise, you want that knife hitting those bones. Get all the meat. Now, like I said, sheep said are a tough fish to fillet, but once you get the hang of it, you can do it. They're absolutely delicious, because they eat little fiddler crabs, little shrimp barnacles, they just eat crustaceans down there on the rocks, and that's why their meat is so good. It is true, you are what you eat. They eat shrimp. They just eat sustenance, you know how it is. Come over this rib cage right here. Ow! I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh, don't do that. <laughs> right over the rib cage right there. See that's, hear that? That's all bone, you don't want that in your filet.
Boom, just like that. Two beautiful sheep's head fillets. Didn't miss any meat, see? And there's not that much meat for how big the fish is. We're gonna go ahead and skin them. That's all you're left with, boys. Not a bad fillet, but you know, for a snapper that big, we're getting a lot more meat. All we gotta do now is cut out the pin bones. Pin bones are in almost every fish, just, just along the blood right there. Got a beautiful sheep's head fillet. Now, I'm gonna show you guys one side of me filleting the spade fish, and then we'll see you in the kitchen. So we got our beautiful spade fish there, and pretty much floats like any other fish. Make that first cut. Oops. And then we're gonna, they have meat all the way in the head, so we're gonna come all the way up there. Just like that. Get all that head meat. I don't want to miss any of that system. Now, I'm curious about, I've eaten spade fish before, it's been a real long time. I'm curious about what the meat, wow. That actually looks really good. Look at that. Doesn't it, Mom? What's wrong? The meat looks good. That was a little sussy. A little sussy wussy. But... Right over the rib cage right there, boys. Look at that. I'm actually very surprised. It, almost, it literally just almost looks like the sheep's head. We're just gonna show you that one side because if you know one side, same thing on the other side. Just cut the pin bones out. I actually forgot to skin this. I'm gonna do it after, but it doesn't really matter. You do it before or after. So the pin bones are always in the middle? Yep, pin bones are always in the bloodline. And then we got a little piece of rib cage left. Now we're gonna go ahead and skin them. Grab the meat, and just work with the meat and the knife. Just like that. Now we got it. Beautiful, skinless. It literally, here's the sheep's head, and here's the spade fish. They look identical, don't they? Mm -hmm. mm, I'm excited to eat this. I'm gonna keep the sheep's head over there and the spade fish here so we know which is which. And we're gonna see you guys in the kitchen. Hey guys, it's Mama Malusi here with Move Away Fishing. Uh, Adam and Victor went out today and caught some big sheep's head and spade fish. And tonight we are going to make Adam and I a coconut curry fish stew over brown rice and black beans. So I already went ahead and chopped all my ingredients up. We have broccoli, onion, garlic. We're gonna use curry, turmeric, fresh ginger, scallions. We have the sheep's head and spade fish right in here. I have some cut up celery, garlic, sweet potato, fresh onion, full fat coconut milk. We're gonna use two cups of bone broth soup in there as well and we're gonna give it a little kick with a red curry paste. We're going to put a coconut oil in the pan. We're gonna throw in spinach leaves at the very end and some fresh basil. So I'm gonna get started by first putting some coconut oil in my wok, and then I'm gonna add um, these two ingredients to it and get those cooked up a little bit and we'll be back. Now we're gonna put some coconut oil in the pan, get this baby nice and hot so we can hear a sizzle. I'm gonna add my celery, onions, garlic, sweet potato, gonna mix all that up. Are you putting the peppers in that too? Yes. Once I mix this up a little, I'm gonna put some yellow peppers, red peppers, and my orange are underneath. This orange out. Looks like a rainbow. Very nutritious, very healthy for you. Alright, so while this is cooking, we got our fillets laid out right here. And I know you guys know what they are, but 
Johnson just got off of work. And Johnson, what do you think does? What do you think that fish is? I haven't told him. It's from the snapper family, and. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Give so, me a, give me a hint. I can't. So, this you thought was from the snapper family. That's actually sheep's head, and that's spade fish. Spade fish would have never guessed. R neither would I when I filleted it. Okay, we're back, and this is nice and stir fried. It's getting soft. So now we're gonna add our wet ingredients. We're gonna use coconut milk, full fat. So I'm gonna skim the fat right off the can because that's where all the meat is. Put this in. I'm gonna turn up the heat to get this boiling. I'm also going to add I thought you turn the heat down to let it simmer. Nope, we're going to let it boil for a sense simmer. We're going to add some turmeric. See, this is why she's doing the cooking. Gives it some nice color and flavor. And then we're going to add some curry powder. Give it some nice flavor and color. And we are going to add just a smidgen. Just a skosh. Of red curry paste. Mix that all around. I'm going to mix all this up. And then I'm going to add some basic chicken broth to add more liquid. And I'm going to bring that to a boil. And I'm going to add a little bit of garlic powder and some brown sugar to sweeten it up just a little. Okay, Mama Malusi is cutting the fish up. Adam wanted to put it in whole, but I was like, no, can't do that. Yeah, so she's just cutting the fish up in a little cubes. So when we throw it into that pot, it cooks all the way around. I'll know the difference. Wow, that is Turn that down. That's I'll know the difference from the sheep's and the spade fish, I'm sure. If not, then it's a good thing. I'm gonna add my broccoli now. I don't want the broccoli too soggy. And it's gonna absorb a lot of the broth and the coconut milk. So, mix this all in. Once this starts to boil, we will add the fish. Okay, so our broccoli, spinach, sweet potato, red onion, all our ingredients are in there. They are getting soft. We don't want them too soft. I'm going to add the fish because this is the very last solid ingredient that's going in. And this should probably cook for about two to three minutes. I'm gonna put a cover on it. Okay, so the fish has been in for about five minutes. We do not want to overcook it. I did not stir it with the spatula because I don't want the fish to break. I covered it. Oh, this is heavy. And we're gonna come over here. The plate is already dressed with brown rice and black beans. Cross my lime. So we're going to spoon this over the rice. Put some pieces of fish in there. Oh, the fish is perfect. Get some coconut curry juice on there. Mmm, that looks good. And then we are going to add a little bit of fresh basil a few scallions, and ginger, fresh grated ginger. Just a little to give it a zest. And that's so. our final touch. And that is it. If you like the recipe, it'll be in the description box below. Enjoy. All right guys, my mom just made my dish. I'm gonna go ahead and try the fish. Uh, I hope it's good. I don't, have I ever eaten fish curry, mom? No. I think it's just chicken curry. Um, wow, it's really soft. That looks like sheep's head there. Mmm. Literally just melts in your mouth. Um, that's definitely a piece of spade fish right there because I can see a little bit of blood on the end. I'm scared. Like 
Mmm. Mm. That's so good. Mmm. Ah! Hot. I literally can't tell the difference between the spade fish and the sheep's head. Take one more bite. They're both so good. It like falls apart in your mouth. Mmm. Everything's really good. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. Super good. Highly recommend it, boys. I'm gonna let my parents try and I'll film their reaction, how they like it. All right, Dad. Go ahead and try it. That was definitely sheep's head. That was spade fish, a little softer, but good. Yeah. It's Has the flavors. Good. Flavor's delicious. Yeah, it's really good. All right, awesome. Mom. Okay. Try broccoli first, because I love broccoli soaked in curry milk. That was the broccoli. Mm. Good. That's the only reason they're subscribed to me, is for the taste of the broccoli. Try the fish. Mmm. It does melt in your mouth. Good. Very good. Thanks, Mom. Everybody seemed to enjoy the fish. I liked it a lot. I burnt my tongue a little bit and it's hurting right now. So I'm gonna put the camera down, eat the rest of this dinner with my family. But appreciate you guys watching. Shout out to Victor for coming over and we shot that video, pretty cool. I'll have his whole channel name popping up right here and his link below. Make sure you guys go subscribe to him if you're not already. Drop a like on this video if you guys liked it. Comment below if you like my mom's recipe. Let me know if you guys are gonna try it because I think you should. It's actually really good. I've never had fish curry before. Hit that notification bell. It notifies you when I post a new video. Please don't forget to subscribe. We're going to start uploading every Monday and Thursday from here on out. That's all we got for you. Until next video, moving weights out.